All right, we're live. All right, welcome everybody to um, our AMA for the month of April. Uh, let's just get started and dive right in. Okay. How far along are the SEC investigations? What are the current regulatory restrictions for listing kin on a proper exchange? Additional part of this, due to the OSC now looking into ICOs, does this create additional problems for KIC and kin? So we're having conversations with regulators around the world. Um, obviously, the SEC is one of those. Uh, we have frequent conversations with them as they try to figure out, and so do we, what is the right way to regulate this market? On one side, there is a ton of opportunity. On the other side, you know, there's pump and dumps, there's scams, like there's real problems with this market. And so we are continuing to have a bunch of conversations with them. I think the exciting thing is when it comes to exchanges is exchanges ask us one question. If I buy this token today, can I use it? Does it have utility? And the answer to that is yes. And so I think when it comes to exchanges, as I talked about earlier, we didn't prioritize it because it wasn't at the top of our list for things we need to do to make Kin the most used cryptocurrency in the world. But as we get closer to the blockchain being ready, as we get closer to Kin being integrated into Kick at real consumer scale, and as we get closer to the launch of the SEK and the KRE, um, now these exchanges are becoming more and more important. Uh, so we're having conversations. Uh, we will continue to have many conversations, not with just the SEC, the OSC. Uh, it seems everybody all around the world is everybody tries to figure out how to think about crypto. OK. Out of the game's roster for Unity, have any of them already approached Kin to adopt the SDK? If so, can you give us any details? So I don't know the answer to that question. Uh, I don't know if there's any specific games that use Unity today um, to you know, talk to us about using Kin. I, I don't know the answer to that. I think. You know, I, I was hanging out on Reddit over the last week, and you know, there was a lot of questions about Unity, which I think was fair. Um, you know, there's all these partnerships being announced in the space today, and there's very little substance to them. So, how can you assure us that there's substance to the Unity announcement? Like, I think right now we are not focused on announcing partnerships because. Until we have a blockchain that's ready for consumer scale, which nobody has today, until we can show that working at consumer scale with real mainstream consumers inside of Kik, which nobody has today, and until we can then package that all up so that any developer can adopt it and start integrating it into their app and getting rewarded for doing that, which nobody has today, until we have those three things, of which nobody, no project to my knowledge, has today consumer scale blockchain, consumer scale application, and consumer scale developer adoption, until we have those three things, partnerships announcements are just that. They're just announcements. So when we announced Unity, the reason we announced it is we said, one, these guys are the biggest and the best at what they do. But two, this is not an announcement that Unity will be using Kin. This is an announcement that Unity will be working with Kin to help all of their developers integrate the cryptocurrency when it is ready, which it is not today. And so with Unity, that means co-selecting a group of beta developers to work with in the early days to integrate Kin. That means co-developing the SDK, working together, how can this Kin SDK work really well for game developers? That means co-hosting events around the world. At Unity, they have these big conferences and having a co-hosted hackathon at their conferences around the world, working with them. And then finally, it means co-marketing, what comes out of that. So Unity and Kin together are marketing this. Uh, so this is very much a collaboration. 
it's not about getting people to integrate kin directly today because that is impossible. Uh, there is no way for a developer to integrate kin today in any sort of reasonable way because the blockchain is not ready for any sort of consumer scale uh, today. But it's about announcing that partnership, getting those things set up so that when we do achieve that, and we think we'll be the first in the world to achieve that, uh, we'll be ready to really pour on the gas and really get that side of the ecosystem going. How will the kin transactions, earn, spend, buy, sell, that take place in apps influence the price of kin on exchanges? Good question. Who is this? Ryzen. I have not seen you before. It's a good question. At least the first time. So. When you say as demand for kin goes up, the price goes up, is that relationship is, is that in relation to only demand on exchanges or demand for kin inside apps as well? Okay. This is an important question because to me, this is what I want to separate kin from all those other crypto projects out there. Today, there is only one thing that is contributing to demand for every currency. And that's, I think, all the way up to Ethereum and Bitcoin. And that's speculation. Why do I buy Bitcoin? Because I think it's going to be worth tomorrow, more tomorrow. Why don't I buy Bitcoin? I don't buy it to buy a coffee. I don't buy it to use. I just buy it to speculate. And what that means is, well, that is true. All these crypto projects are, the demand for them is purely driven by speculation. They go up, they go down, they're all over the place, okay? What do I want for Kin? I want Kin to be the first cryptocurrency that's used by a mainstream consumer base as a currency, meaning that they would buy it even if they knew it would never go up in price because they want to use it. Because if we can do this, if we can make Kin the most used cryptocurrency in the world, that will create the most demand in the world. Why? Because for example, somebody wants to use it in Kick. Okay? The only way to get into this group chat is to buy in with Kin. The only way to get this great sticker about some meme that just came out is to buy it with Kin. The only way to participate in all these things I want to participate with inside of Kick is with kin. So now I have two options. I can either go somewhere else in the ecosystem or inside kick to earn that kin. Maybe I create my own sticker. Maybe I host a group chat. Maybe I just fill out a survey or watch an ad, but I can go earn it. Or I can take a shortcut and say, man, I really want that sticker now. I don't want to go do all those things to earn it first. I'm going to go to an exchange and just buy it. When that happens, when one of these cryptocurrencies can break through and be the most, like the first cryptocurrency that's actually used as a currency, I think it will unlock an incredible amount of demand for that currency. You can either earn it inside the, the ecosystem, inside the economy, or you can go out and buy it with another cryptocurrency or with fiat. And that ultimately is what will drive up the price of kin and make that ecosystem so valuable. And you know, stepping back for a second, this is where I get a little frustrated because I look at all these other crypto projects out there and I say, but who is using it? I think that is the most important question today in the entire industry. Answer me this question. I have one question that ask everybody. Why would a merchant accept your cryptocurrency when they know it could be worth half as much tomorrow? And why would a consumer spend your cryptocurrency when it could be worth twice as much tomorrow? This is the question I asked Gavin, the lead developer on Bitcoin back in 2012. This is the question I asked Brian from Coinbase when he joined the Union Square Ventures portfolio and he was at the CEO summit. I, this is a question I asked him back in 2013. I actually went back over the last week and I listened to interviews with a bunch of the founders of other top 15 crypto projects and nobody had an answer to this question. Nobody. 
I, I have yet to hear an answer from the crypto industry on why are people going to use a currency that could be worth half as much tomorrow? And why are people going to spend a cryptocurrency that could be worth twice as much tomorrow? I think the first project to answer this question, to one, show that blockchain is ready for mainstream scale, to two, show that you can use that blockchain, use that currency, to get millions of mainstream consumers earning it and spending it, and three, can then demonstrate that they provided the tools, the SDK, to get all sorts of other developers on board. I think the first project to demonstrate those things, and I think today no project has demonstrated any of those things. But I think the first one to demonstrate that um, is going to be incredibly excited. And that is what I'm focused on, demonstrating that blockchain is ready for scale, demonstrating that cryptocurrencies can be integrated into a place where millions of consumers are using it, and three, to demonstrate that this cryptocurrency is rapidly expanding beyond kick. Will further partnerships be announced this month, or will it be out, or will it be throughout the course of Q2? Okay, I'm glad this question has come up. How much time about? We're 11 minutes. Out. I got lots of time. Okay, let me sit back. Um, we put forward a roadmap at the end of last year on what we would do by when, and one of the things we said is. By the end of Q1, we're going to announce three to five partnerships. Okay, so back last year we said, okay, four or five months from now, whatever it was, we're going to announce three to five partnerships. That was a mistake. It was a, it was a mistake to say we were going to do that by the end of Q1, and it was and it was also a mistake that once we did say that and we only delivered one, that we didn't explain. And so I want to take some time now to explain why, because we only announced one when we said our goal was three to five, and we are not going to be announcing, I am not going to be announcing any dates for when these partnerships are going to come out next. And the reason why is we are on, so maybe there's two things. First, why did we only announce one? We only announced one because we realized that if we announce anybody other than the biggest and the best at what they do, that we would be shooting ourselves in the foot. Okay? There are millions of developers in the App Store. We could have gone, we could have found three to five easily. Yeah, they're not the biggest, but um, sorry, I'm, I'm in New York City today and there's, there's sirens outside. We could have got three to five and said, yeah, they're not the biggest and the best, but hey, three to five, we met our commitment, let's keep going for it. What would that have done? What that would have done is all the other partners we're talking to, potential partners, who are the biggest and best at what they do, they would look at those announcements and say, hmm, you know, those weren't as big as we were hoping. Maybe, maybe I should wait and see what happens. And so we sat there and we said, okay, we have two options. One is we can follow through with our and hit our goal of three to five partnerships and achieve that today, but shoot ourselves in the foot going forward. Or two, we can announce just one and miss our goal for today, but not shoot ourselves in the foot going forward because we only announce the biggest and the best partners who are the absolute best in the world at what they do. And we decided to do the latter. Our mistake was that we weren't upfront about that, and that was a mistake. The second mistake we made was making this commitment in the first place. We are on the bleeding edge of technology, we're on the bleeding edge of economics, of user experience design. We're on the bleeding edge. And what that means is there's just so many variables. And so if we throw it a date, hey, we want to do this by the end of Q3, we have no idea of what's going to come up between now and then that might get in the way of achieving that goal. So what can we do instead? You're sitting there and say, whoa, Ted, he's like, He's back away, he doesn't want to make commitments anymore. Like, you know, what the heck? I get it. I get it. So if we can't commit to specific dates because it's just we're too much on the bleeding edge and too many areas and there's too many unknowns, what can we commit to? 
And we thought about this as a team, you know, what can we commit to, what can we say? Going forward, what we want to do is, one is we want to be very clear on what our priorities are. Two is we want to give updates on our progress against those priorities. And three is we want to announce things as they happen, not ahead of time. So right now, what are our top three priorities? Our top three priorities are one, demonstrate that blockchain is ready for mainstream scale. Nobody in the world has done that. Nobody. Not one project that I'm aware of has demonstrated that they are ready for mainstream consumer scale with millions of consumers. Everybody is going about that. What is to me the wrong way? I, I don't know how else I can say that. You know, oh, we have this super complicated technology and we have all these academics and we have all this and we have all that. It's so complicated you can never understand it. I actually think the answer to this is very simple. There's Ethereum, which has very high decentralization but very low scale. There is Stellar, which has very high scale but lower decentralization. And you can choose which one you want to use. If you're a consumer and you just want high scale, low fees, but you don't mind that it's less decentralized, okay, use your account on Stellar. If you're an investor and you really care that you know, your hardware wallets, exchanges, you want it super decentralized and you don't really care about the fees or, or the transaction times, use it on, on Ethereum. And then you can move between them. It's almost like, so we are the first ones to come up with this answer. We're going to be the first ones to demonstrate this working at scale, at, at least from what we can see right now. And it's almost like the answer is like too simple for the crypto industry. It's like, oh, it could never be that simple. It's like, what is a blockchain at the end of the day? It's a database. You know, we could have a super scale database today. It would just be not decentralized at all. That technology exists. And so we're going to be the first ones to demonstrate that. It's a very simple answer. If your entire project is about how complicated your technology, I can see why you'd be resistant to the answer being that simple. Uh, but we think it is. And we think we're going to be able to demonstrate that. Um, as of right now, we feel like we're the first ones in the world. The second priority we have is to show that we can then take that blockchain and show that we can get thousands, hundreds of thousands, millions of consumers using that cryptocurrency in their daily lives. Again, this is something that not a single other project has done, not one. That you could actually get consumers using a cryptocurrency in a world where today, if we told everybody, hey, all these cryptocurrencies are never going to go up in value again, everybody would stop using them. Everybody is buying them to speculate. We want to be the first project in the world to show that now, actually, millions of consumers are going to use this as a currency. I think that's what's interesting about Kick and Kin is like, we've already done this with Kick Points. We've already shown that we can build a new economy around a new currency where people are earning it and spending it. So that's number two. And then number three is we want to give developers the tools and the incentive so that any developer anywhere in the world can join the Kin ecosystem. You know, if you have an app today and you want to integrate Kin, you want to get people earning and spending in this digital sharing economy and you want your app to be part of it, that one, there's nobody you need to talk to. You can just go download the SDK and add it to your app. And two, that you can get compensated right away. You don't need to call anybody. You don't need to say, hey, if I do this, what do I get for it? You can read it right there in the code. It outlines the rules of the game such that if you contribute, you integrate Kin, you get people using Kin inside your app, that you will get paid. And the only thing you need to trust is an algorithm. These are the three things we're focused on right now. And if I were to summarize them, we want to be the first cryptocurrency that's actually used as a currency. And we think if we can achieve that, that this will be one of the most exciting projects on the planet. OK, let me refresh here. Take a sip of my non Tim Hortons coffee. OK. OK. 
Could you address the reasons why the partnership announcements were changed just before the announcement? What effect that has had and going forward, what announcement can you confidently roadmap for us for the next two to six weeks? Um, okay, there's three questions in here. Let's, I'll, I'll start with one and then we'll see how far we get. I think hiker to MTN, the next two to six weeks. Like, that's like crazy, okay? And I know we are in the crypto industry and I've spent a lot of time in the crypto industry. I was at the Bitcoin conference in January, 2012, six years ago with the lead developer of Bitcoin and only 11 other people, okay? I'm not foreign to this industry, I'm not foreign to how this industry works. But what just frustrates me so much about crypto today, not really for us, but for the communities, is just how much bullshit there is. When all you're doing is explaining why your technology is so complicated, when all you're doing is explaining you know, who you're talking to and who you might work with in the future, it's easy to create a roadmap of, of these things. Like, but at the end of the day, none of that's going to matter. At the end of the day, what's going to matter is one thing and one thing only. How many mainstream consumers use your cryptocurrency on a daily basis as a currency? And today, that number for every single project is zero. Zero. So, the two to six weeks, nothing's gonna happen in two to six weeks. If you think that something real can happen in two to six weeks, you should go find a different project. And I'm totally okay with that. I, I mean that with no disrespect. But if you are looking for the project where it's real, the people are real, they have morals, they're aligned, they wanna make this happen for the benefit of the world, but that you know it's going to therefore take time because you've got to solve these things. One, a blockchain that can actually scale. Nobody has that today. We think we're going to be the first. Two, have a cryptocurrency that mainstream consumers use. Nobody has that today. We think we're going to be the first. Three, actually has an accelerating number of developers coming on board, getting their consumers to use this as a currency. Today, nobody has that. We think we're going to be the first. But those things all take time. Um, and so I think you know, at the end of the day, we have deep experience in this area where we have clear priorities. And lastly, we're also aligned. Kick holds 30% of all kin. We want more than anybody kin to be extremely valuable. That's why we rolled our billion dollar consumer app into this play. Not for fun, <laughs> not, not for fun. I've been doing this for over nine years now, not for fun but because we thought it was the way to create the most value for the world and for ourselves. And so we're all in, uh, and we really believe in what we're doing, no matter how long it takes. Okay, I'm only gonna answer the first one there just because I think that is the fair thing to do. Okay, Ted, is it possible to explain the tokenomic of kin. I don't know what tokenomic means, but I'm going to assume it's token economics. I want to know if there's any correlation between the price of the kin and between user spending in app transaction for kins slash or buy them via fiat in the crypto market. Basically, will the crypto market dictate the price of kin? Today, the price of every single cryptocurrency is um, determined by one thing and one thing only. And that is how much it's being speculated on. Okay, so what do people do? They spend all their time flying around, speaking at as many conferences as they can, to get hyped as much as they can, to drive as much speculation as they can. And that's the name of the game. You know, not a single mainstream consumer is using a single cryptocurrency as a currency. But when there is a cryptocurrency that is being used by mainstream consumers as a currency, it should drive up demand drastically. 
Why? Because crypto industry is so small. You know, you could go to every conference in the world. You could talk to all the whales. You could, you could, you know, just spend all day speaking to people in the industry about how special it is what you are building and what you'll reach thousands, tens of thousands of people. Compare that to the millions, tens of millions, hundreds of millions, billions of consumers and how much demand they could create. And so for us, we are knowingly playing a different game. We have made a bet that in the short term, it may hurt us that we're not hitting the conference circuit and speaking at all these events to get these whales to drive speculation. We get that in the short term, that's probably hurting us. But the bet we've made is that in the long term, if we can be the most used cryptocurrency in the world, that in the long term, that will create far, far more value for us and for everyone in the ecosystem. Are there any updates on getting listed on major exchanges? We're not going to announce anything until it's ready to be announced. And I know that's probably tough, but I think that's just the right way to operate in this environment. But what I will say is Kin doesn't work. And I've said this before, Kin doesn't work until it's on major exchanges. It just doesn't work. If I'm a developer and I say, hey, I want to build an app that uses Kin so that I can get a piece of this Kin reward engine so that what, I can just sit on those tokens? No, so I can sell them and pay my bills. That's the whole thing. That's what we're creating for other developers. That's also what we're creating for ourselves and our investors. And so being on major exchanges uh, needs to happen before the launch of the Kin reward engine, but doesn't need to happen before that. And I know that's painful. I get it, but is it is getting on a major exchange more important than having the first blockchain that can achieve consumer scale? No, not to us. Is it more important than being the first cryptocurrency used by millions of consumers? No, not to us. Is it the more important than being the first cryptocurrency to have an accelerating number of developers getting their mainstream consumers to use this cryptocurrency? No, not to us. And so. Exchanges are important, but they're not in our top three priorities. Not at this time. Two twenty-seven. Are you receiving any support feedback from Tencent on Kin? We've discussed it with them. I wouldn't say we've gotten much feedback from them. Um, I don't want to speak on their behalf, but I think, you know, they're a big company and they're a very successful company. And so unlike us, unlike the other 99% of developers, in a way, they're more like Facebook or Google. You know, they're the dominant technology com company in their market. And so they don't need the cryptocurrency monetization model. And therefore, it's not as interesting to them as it is to us and so many other developers. Um, so we haven't discussed it that in depth with them. Okay, let's do last question. What is the reason for announcing one partner in Q1 and it was said to be three to five? And why are you releasing one partner at a time in the coming weeks? Yeah, I think I already answered that one. So I'm gonna keep going. A long question based on current knowledge of what will be in the Kinet app. Okay. A gift card seller will sell gift cards for kin, presumably for a US dollar amount of kin, as a fixed amount of kin could potentially equal big losses. Yes, good point. If the ecosystem is as big as you suggest, with millions of people earning and spending kin, if let's say one million five dollar gift cards are purchased daily, five million US dollars, inversely and in turn, four to five million US dollars in kin needs to be sold to cover the expenses of the gift card purchaser. How do you intend to maintain the dedicated level of price stability of kin a gift card business would require? Good question. Also, what incentive is there for traders to purchase kin knowing that each and every day, four to $5 million 
US dollars worth of kin will be sold by just one of the businesses. Brackets. Some have argued that you can purchase kin in app using a credit card, making it similar to in app token purchases, which makes sense if everything is pegged to kin, but not so much for this type of business. This is a great question, okay? Because I think this gets at the core of what makes kin different, okay? I've said a lot of times that all these other projects are like, hey, we're gonna be a payment for the physical world. If only we had faster transaction times, if only we had um, better user experience, if only we had big lists, then our cryptocurrency will be used for payments in the real world. And that's just not true. Um, we have actually seen people try to make this work with Bitcoin for years now, years and years and years, and yet the number of transactions happening by consumers in the real world, as even as excitement and hype around Bitcoin has gone up, the number of transactions, real transactions, has gone down. The number of people actually buying stuff for Bitcoin. Why? Because the entire physical world runs on dollars. Businesses want dollars because they're, that's what they pay all their expenses in. Consumers want dollars because that's what they pay all their expenses in. Everybody wants dollars. And so no cryptocurrency has broken into that space. And I think no cryptocurrency will. This is why our history with kick points is so important. This is why I said to Gavin in 2012 and uh, Brian in 2013 that, hey, this is never going to work. Instead of focusing on the physical world, we need to focus on the digital world. Okay? So that's what we're doing. That's what we did with kick points. And the question with kick points, the question with kin, the question with any cryptocurrency is how do you launch an economy that gets millions of mainstream consumers earning and spending in a new cryptocurrency? When that cryptocurrency is one, very volatile, and two, deflationary, meaning 